I took four of the most popular gaming TVs that are available on the market right now for 2023 and I compared them so that you can make a good buying decision. And of course, if you need help making that decision, I'm going to do everything I can to help you with that, including giving you some buying advice towards the end of the video if you do need help with your buying decision. The ones I want to look at today is going to be the LG G3, the Samsung S95C, the Samsung Q90C, and the LG C3. Now it's important to know that the G3 and the S95C will always be around the same price and the Q90C and the LG C3 will probably be around the same price. But there is also the S90C to consider as that's going to be very similar to the S95C and be almost just as capable. So if you want to save some money and get what the S95C is delivering, you could go that route with the C3 pricing in mind. Now let's get the basic stuff right out of the way and tell you that all of these TVs are very capable of gaming and they all have four HDMI 2.1 ports and they all are going to just pretty much tick all of the boxes. Now the S95C doesn't have a full 48 gigabytes bandwidth HDMI 2.1 port, but I don't think that's a huge deal anyway, unless you're a hardcore PC gamer. I doubt this ever really affects you. And even if you are a hardcore PC gamer, I doubt it even affects you either. Now what might affect you a little bit is going to be some of the signal dropouts that come with the S95C and the One Connect box. Now this is a really unfortunate thing and it's not something I ran into a ton when I was testing the S95C, but I did run into it on occasion where I would just get a signal loss when trying to play the Xbox Series X. The only way to fix this was to shut down the TV and then shut down the Xbox and then hope that the handshake was a little bit better between the TV and the Xbox. Other users have reported it as well, but again, it didn't occur a lot. It only happened a few times when testing the S95C. Other than that, it was pretty smooth sailing. Now the C3, the G3, the S90C, the QN90C, I didn't have any signal dropouts with that. So I do have to believe that the signal dropouts have to be the culprit of the One Connect box. So just letting you know that with the S95C in mind. Which is why if you're considering the S95C for gaming, I would strongly consider you think about the S90C. Not only are you going to save some money, but you also won't have to deal with those signal dropouts that come with the One Connect box for the S95C. Now, next thing I wanna talk about is features. So all of these TVs are going to have a capable game bar type function. So for the G3 and the C3, you have the game optimizer, which I have covered on this channel before, but it's pretty much just going to be a good game menu with some picture presets and the ability to raise dark areas so you see in the shadows, things like that. You also have multi-view on both of these TVs. So if you're ever trying to look up a strategy guide while playing a game via YouTube, well, you can do that and have your split screen with your game mode and you will be able to have no problems at all and get through the level that you're stuck on. Now, one thing that the Samsung TVs have that the LG TVs don't have is going to be Game Motion Plus, which is motion interpolation for game mode. And this is really good because it is a low latency motion interpolation, which cannot be found on any other TV brand. So Samsung definitely has something very unique there with that in mind. Now, when you're talking about gaming features that are available via streaming, you do have the Xbox app on the Samsung TVs, and you also have GeForce Now, Luna and some other game streaming services that you might be familiar with. Now, LG doesn't have Xbox, but they do have some game streaming services such as Luna. Okay, so the features are out of the way. Now we have to talk about picture quality and performance. So performance wise, it is very similar across the board. You are having very low input lag around five milliseconds at 120 Hertz on every one of these TVs. And then pretty much the only downside that you're going to have with the QN90C versus these OLED TVs is that the response time won't be as fast. Now, the response time not being as fast is because it is not OLED technology. 
so you might incur a little bit of ghosting here and there. Now on the flip side of that, with 30 frames per second games in mind, you are going to have a better time on the LCD TV. So basically just think of it as like fast paced games, shooters, racing games, 60 frames per second games, 120 frames per second games. Those are going to be smooth as butter on OLED TVs and they're gonna be pretty smooth on LCD TVs, but you may incur a little bit of ghosting where if you run into a 30 frames per second game, the OLED TVs will definitely handle it a little bit worse than the LCD TVs. So Game Motion Plus can help with that for the OLEDs, but when it comes down to 30 frames per second, LCD is still gonna give you the best performance. So performance wise, input lag, that's all about the same on all of these TVs. Now, when we get to picture quality, that is where we have a huge separation with all of these TVs in mind, and we can kind of dive in to the pros and cons there. Now, let's start with the Q90C. I really like this TV for gaming, but you do sometimes lose a lot of what makes the Neo QLED special when you are talking about game mode because you are going to have to reduce a lot of your performance because you don't have the full capability of the local dimming in game mode. So that's something that has always been a problem for LCD TVs and the Neo QLED line from Samsung is no exception. Now it has gotten a little bit better over the years, but it is going to be something you notice in darker games or games that are set in the nighttime. You will notice those scenes are going to be a bit lifted, maybe a little bit cloudy on the QN90C. Whereas with the OLED TVs that it's being compared with, that's going to look much better on those TVs and it's not going to be a fair example. Now, when you switch that scene to a brighter daylight scene, well, then that is where the OLED TVs may tend to struggle a little bit more than the LCD TVs. In fact, the Q90C is able to get brighter than all of the TVs that we have available for us. But in game mode, I didn't see that as much, and I thought that the QD OLED TVs that I compared it to did get just as bright as the QN90C in most scenes. But still, the QN90C can beat the QD OLED TVs, and most of the time it will beat the W OLED TVs, though the G3 can get very bright, much like the QD OLED TVs. So they'll be trading blows back and forth, but the C3 will definitely not be punching with the QN90C like the other two will. Now pulling up one of the comparison shots here, I do have NHL Hockey on the Xbox Series X playing here and you can see that what you're seeing is that the QN90C is going to be the brighter of the white ice. That's something that you will notice right away and something you might also notice is the actual screen uniformity in a scene like this. So when you're sweeping the ice back and forth, you'll see that the QN90C does have a little bit of dirty screen effect. And so does the LG OLED TVs to a degree. And they also suffer from a bit of tinting where the QD OLEDs are pretty clean. And I don't see any real uniformity issues from those TVs. So when it comes to uniformity, QD OLED is definitely the king. Now the other thing you'll notice on this screen is again the brightness of the ice. This is one of those examples where the QN90C will be the brightest TV of the bunch with a scene like this. While the OLED TVs will look a little bit duller and that is because of these two things. For the OLED TVs you have ASBL and ABL impacting the overall brightness of the screen. So you can see that right here that the QN90C is significantly brighter than both of those three OLED TVs. Now it's important you don't confuse ABL and ASBL as they are two different things. ABL is just a automatic brightness limiter which you will find on every TV where ASBL is a automatic static brightness limiter where you will likely only see that on OLED TVs. The automatic brightness limiter kicks in to reduce the power if the screen is getting too bright. When this happens the screen will automatically dim and the reason why this is in place is to protect the TV. And this is something that you see on OLED TVs a little bit more than LCD TVs because it is more sensitive. But both TVs do have ABL to a degree. Now with the automatic static brightness limiter, that is going to be when there's anything static on the screen for a very long time, such as a scoreboard, a logo. That is when you see the TV dim down slowly. It's not something that happens right away like ABL where that just kicks in. ASBL will gradually dim down the image resulting in a duller looking image compared to the QN90C. This feature is in place on OLED TVs to protect it from image retention so that 
images don't hang around on the screen. So the plus side to the QN90C is that it does not have this to worry about. And the automatic brightness limiter for the QN90C is not something that is very noticeable in the first place. So I do think like if you're worried about that kind of thing, reducing the overall brightness of your image, then the QN90C would be a better bet for that. Now, the brightness is going to be something that changes on the Q90C and the OLED TVs regardless because it depends on what you're viewing. For example, I will show you a few things where the Q90C actually looks like the duller TV of the three TVs. For example, if you have something like a spell cast on the screen like I'm showing you here, you'll see that for the OLED TVs, they look brighter than the Q90C. This is because the Samsung Q90C uses a local dimming algorithm because it uses that backlight control. You have to deal with these things where the TV is going to try to suppress some of the highlights so that you don't have blooming on the screen. And unfortunately, that downside will lead to a duller looking highlight presentation for some of your specular highlights, which is weird to say because, you know, the Q90C is more capable of that high brightness than the OLED TVs. But when it comes down to some examples, you'll see that it just doesn't give you that full brightness capability with some of the specular highlights. And that is where you will see a difference with the QN90C. Now moving on to a category that I don't feel is talked about enough, and that is going to be standard dynamic range, SDR gaming. And this is important because there's a lot of SDR sources when it comes down to games. And there's a lot of games that don't support HDR or the HDR that they do have is absolutely not worthy of being used. So I have to say that SDR is something that is very overlooked. And unfortunately for LG OLED, it is something that does suffer. And SDR gaming has been a downside for me with LG OLEDs for a very long time. They don't allow you to toggle peak brightness in your SDR game mode. Now, if you do have ALLM available to you, you can just get out of game mode and use the other mode. But if you don't have ALLM, unfortunately, like the Nintendo Switch, for example, then you're going to have to deal with a lower peak brightness than what you might be used to with your TV. So on the other hand, with the S95C, I didn't have any issues with the SDR peak brightness. And this was something that I thought it really just did a great job over the other OLED TVs. The S90C was great with this as well. And I've also liked what Sony does in their game mode with SDR in mind. So I just hope LG could do something in the future that lets us change peak brightness with SDR game mode. Now, when it comes down to what is the brightest TV in SDR game mode, that is for sure going to go to the QN90C. You're just going to get a more impactful full screen brightness from the QN90C. It's not even close. This is a real big SDR gaming beast. So if you play a lot of SDR games, I think people are going to really love having an LCD TV for that reason. Now looking at the S95C, that still did really good with SDR brightness in mind, just not as good as the QN90C, but it did surpass the G3 and the C3 quite a bit. So I would say for SDR gamers, definitely look towards Samsung over LG for that reason. Next, I want to talk about color and game mode because we've kind of talked about this before on this channel. If you're not familiar with the game mode issues with LG in mind, I have a full video talking about this, but just to cover it briefly, the LG OLED TVs in game mode just feel a little bit desaturated with some of the brighter vivid colors. And it is something that you will notice when it's side by side next to a TV that's capable that it's just not going to deliver the same type of game mode experience. And you'll also notice by toggling from game mode to outside of a different picture mode on the LG OLEDs that you're just getting a better picture outside of game mode. And that's really unfortunate for an OLED TV because most OLED TVs don't suffer from this. Again, I'm not going to dive too much into this because I've covered it in a whole different video. And if you want to watch that video, it will be in the description titled Gaming Problems for LG. Another issue worth talking about is going to be the way that smooth gradation is going to work with the LG OLEDs, as in it's not going to work at all. 
Yes, it is a feature on the LG OLEDs, but in game mode, it just doesn't work. It is selectable, but it has no effect on game mode whatsoever. So because of this, you will see more posterization in your games for the LG OLEDs than you will with Samsung TVs. Now, despite not having a smooth gradation feature, Samsung TVs handle it better natively. Okay, now I promised buying advice, so here is the buying advice. And please keep in mind, whatever TV you do decide on buying, if you would, please consider using my affiliate links to buy that TV. It will go a long way to help the channel, and I can't thank you guys enough for doing that, so thank you. All right, now let's talk about this, because this is where I can see a lot of people kind of getting confused and thinking that they should go out and buy the S95. C because it seems to be the TV that has the least amount of weaknesses and you'd be right in that but I will say that if you're considering the S95C please make sure you consider the S90C first because I do think it is just as capable in game mode. Now the numbers will point to the S95C with everything in mind but I have seen these two side by side and to me I would get the S90C. I would tell people save your money and get the S90C if it is specifically for gaming. The S95C just has a little bit too much to worry about with those dropouts in mind and I can't control when those are going to happen and I think that would drive me a little nuts. While it didn't happen a lot, it's just something that can happen and users have reported it. So just steer clear of the S95C if you're just doing this for gaming, especially if you're a PC gamer, it seems to have more dropouts with PC gaming in mind. Now looking at the G3, the C3, I honestly wouldn't consider those for gaming if you are doing gaming as your primary use case. I've said it before and I'll say it again, the S90C beats those two TVs cleanly for game mode. It's not even close. And I would say if you're gaming for SDR in mind, the QN90C would be the one that I choose if that's what you're primarily doing because there's a lot of 30 frames per second games and there's a lot of SDR games that are also in 30 frames per second. So that would be where I say the QN90C gets the nod over all the TVs. Now I do like the S90C for SDR gaming as well, but not as much as the QN90C. And I would say I get the QN90C over the C3 in most cases for all the HDR gaming. And I would even say get it over the G3, unless of course you can use auto low latency mode, then I like the G3 better than the QN90C. If you have any more questions regarding these TVs, I will be happy to answer them in the comments below. If you found this video helpful at all, please give a thumbs up and consider subscribing. If you need more help in finding the right TV for you, I got two videos that I think you'll like right here.